this story. And then the end being, um, because this is an ongoing story, like your story kind of never, has not ended yet, um, how did you, as a filmmaker, decide when to end your film? When is the, the film actually finished for you? How I found the story? Um, as you can see, the Sparrow has a very high social media profile. So I've been following her on the internet for quite a few years. And I knew that she was bold, confrontational, and has the unique style of doing activism using performance art. So when she did the free sex campaign, and I thought, this woman is crazy, and I wanted to find her and find out why she did that. And also because I personally was curious about uh, sex workers' rights and the sex workers' life in China. So at the time, I was in New York studying documentary. So I called her and said, um, can I follow you for a few months to make a documentary? And she said, we can talk when you come back to China. I've never met you, and I don't know who you are. So I returned to China, and the first thing I landed was calling her. I said, I'm here. Can we meet? And she said, no, because I'm not at home. And I said, when will you be back home? And she said, maybe a month, maybe two, maybe never. And I was like, what's going on? And I managed to ask her, could you please at least tell me which city are you at? And she said, I'm in Guangzhou city, and I cannot tell you what I'm doing. And I was like, wow, such a coincidence. I'm in Guangzhou city too, which I wasn't. <laughs> I was about like 40, 100, 400 miles away. And I was like, since I'm here, can we meet tomorrow for coffee? And she said, sure. And then I took an overnight bus and got to the Guangzhou city the next morning. And we scheduled to have coffee the, uh, you know, out of one place. She never showed up. And she didn't answer my phone, my message. And that happened over three days. She just never, when we made an appointment, she just didn't show up. And after two days, I thought I'm gonna give up this project because she was so not, not reliable. But at the end, like three days later, she finally, I got a hold of her and in her hotel that she was staying. And she, she apologized and she said, I'm so sorry that I couldn't meet you. I was really busy and I couldn't talk to you on the phone, but I'm in the middle of a conference. If you wanna talk to me, you can wait at the conference for two hours. And she took me to the conference room and opened the door. It was a room full of the most wanted activists in China and they were discussing the Hainan case. And that was the moment I realized that it was something really, because I've been hearing the news about the rape case over and over on the TV, yeah? And then the story totally changed. It wasn't a sex worker story anymore um, from that point on. And the next question is when, when I knew the film is finished, I didn't know. It was a question I asked um, people over and over, like, because this is my first film, and I didn't know how other filmmakers decide that the film is uh, finished. So I've been asking, I remember I asked filmmakers, like, how did you know when your film is finished? Because I had rough cut one, rough cut two, rough cut three, four, five, seven, rough, rough fine cut, fine rough cut. It's like, I didn't know whether, I thought it was finished a year ago or it's never finished. But to, uh, to make the decision to have it come out now um, was because the lawyer, as you can see at the end, she's still in jail. Um, she, two weeks ago, she was just formally charged as uh, subverting the government, and she faces a sentence from 15 years to life sentence in jail. And I even um, I even adapted like uh, this film into a seven minutes short and published on the Guardian um, about four or five months ago when she was arrested.